But then there's the CC situation too, which has an interesting well, tale we're, to we're tell. We're gonna get married one oh. of these days. All right, good. What? You guys aren't married now? Well, <laughs> you're that, you're not one to say. What? You were with us on the yeah. auspicious occasion well, she it was in Hawaii. Hawaii. He's joking. You mean it's not legal? Oh, yeah. Is that his oh. <laughs> I was going along with your kitty. <laughs> it's just... like the first night I stayed over here and. And uh, Mildred said, you're going over the house? Oh. <laughs> I said, yes. <laughs> she right. was just aghast that I was going to come over and spend the night over here. We had that's before set, Hawaii. That's before Hawaii. Oh. And I slept in the other bedroom. And, and, uh, and it was, it was your father, yeah. and Nita was here. Uh, we had two bedrooms. And we, I saw, in yeah, fact, yeah. I slept downstairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long yeah. as you have two bedrooms. What are you getting nervous about and dropping things for? <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, but it was this Miller just come on glue. Oh, I bet. Oh, she did. I remember that too. You're going over to the house. You're going over to the house? That's funny. It's amazing. Yeah. You've hung in there. Way to go. So you should get to school. Grandma Nell, you're talking about. Yeah, Grandma Nell. Okay, how did she get to school? Well, uh, they lived. They're, they're, uh, One more time. They lived on a little. Oh, this is a great shot. This is a great farm. shot. Man! <laughs> yes. They lived in a little farm, and they had to either go horseback or walk to school. This was in the wintertime. Right. And no socks, but they they would walk along. Wait, no socks in the wintertime? No socks in the wintertime. No socks. Well, they were out of socks. They just wore shoes. They would go down the cow path. The cows that would, they would all go out and down this one path to get to the field for the graze for the day. And there wasn't was slim pickings in the winter time. Well, these kids, uh, I, uh, honest scouts, honest, the big three, would uh, run so far and then they'd have to stop. And warm their feet, even if they were in their big shoes, they got to warm their feet. So they got stepped on and stepped into the cow pie. You're lying. Which was no, which freshly was dropped, just freshly the cow dropped. Cow pie was warm because it's body heat right out of the cow. Right. There isn't that something. But the the sad or the bad part about that was for the teacher. Yes. Because when they got to school, the trough, the horse trough, uh, was froze over. And so they really couldn't wash themselves properly like yeah. they would. But no, they have to go into school on that one big old pot belly stove. And when things started drying Whoa, out, yes. you can imagine. Yes. Oh, it's almost getting dark, and then we're going to shoot them all off. Oh. Big ones, too. Oh. And then they explode once we saw explode once that grandma got. Yeah. yeah. Somebody else. They almost just shot um, me in the head. Well, hold well, somebody. Uh, duck. That other story you know about your grandma, uh, nice you, where she had to go to the bathroom, oh, and nice they were driving out southern Utah in the winter time. Yeah. Old touring car, and she had three brothers, and they were in the car with her. Yes. <clears throat> she got out, or they said they had to have a stop, you know, yeah. peace stop, so they got out and went out of the car. And she wasn't going to go out in that cold stuff, you know. The boys had an easy time of doing yes. it. They had their their easy thing, you know, that they the, could. The, the plumbing deal. With. Yeah, they had the better plumbing. So what did she do? The yeah. old touring car. She pulled up the floorboard. What? The wooden floorboards, you know, they had them in those touring cars. And she sat down there. And Are you serious? But what she did, she weed right on the manifold. Oh, oh my, my gosh! Oh, I, I, and it came up and steamed her. Oh, you're serious? So there was some pain. It hurts me now. Were you were you in the vehicle or just you heard tail of this? I heard tail of this. Yeah. And it steamed her. So, but she put everything back together. The boards on the floorboard, and the brothers come back in, but all the way to Vernon, Utah, which would probably be another 40 miles. They kept complaining about the odor. And the new. The newer home, which was across the street, yeah. this is an oasis. Yeah. We could watch the women go out to the outhouse. No inside plumbing then, but they go out to the outhouse. But they always waited. I don't know how they could wait so long, but they did. 
right. till the other one had to go on the same time to go out because go together was two or three holer and they could sit and talk together oh, visit yeah. where was this at where was this at yeah, it's small, it? <laughs> Where was this at? Oasis, it used Utah. To be small. Do you remember using a two holer yourself? Oh yeah. Hey, you look good, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Life is good. Tell you me about your mother's good. cooking. Do you recall a favorite meal? Oh yeah. That's worked on. Cake on Sunday. Oh. Yeah. She baked the cake on Sunday from scratch. We all, it's the only time we had the real good refreshments. Oh, wow. Cake on Sunday. wow. <laughs> and then she made. Uh, Delicious snow ice cream. It was just not enough people. Where it was just, you'd go out and get the snow and it was nice and clean. She'd use snow? Mm -hmm. huh? She'd use actual snow in the yeah. wintertime, you mean? In the yeah. wintertime. Yeah. And whip it up with, I don't know what she put in it besides sugar and, and, uh, and vanilla, but made snow ice cream. Wow. Delicious. Okay. But well, you had to get it when it was brand new because in Salt Lake City everybody used coal and it wasn't but a, a night gone by and all the snow would be black over the top. Actually our first job we were picking cherries out in, in uh, Centerville which was north of Salt Lake City. It's a big cherry orchard and we live right there in this open bunkhouse. My brother and I and my cousin. You lived there? Yeah, we stayed there all week. Yes. And the folks would come and pick us up. How old were you? Let's see, it was about maybe 14. Wow. 14. Well, the, the downfall of that whole job was the boss had a candy store inside this place and we could buy candy and, and goodies and never had can pop at that time or not, but we could buy buy these candies. And I worked there, and, and then we'd have cherry fights. Kids would be in one tree, and we'd be in our room, and we'd throw these cherries away. And you know, a cherry stain stays oh, yeah. on your clothes. All right. Mother knew that. Well, anyway, when Dad come to pick me up, because he had me a good job, and he said, and oh, he was mad, because he went in, and I got for the whole week's work, because I shopped at the country store. <laughs> I got 45 cents for the Because <laughs> you spent all your money. 45 cents, yeah. But it, then he took me to my real job, the first real job. And this was downtown for the Shell Oil Company, hmm. the Shell Oil Station. And this is when you you wore all whites and a white cap or a... Uh, a hat yeah. that, that uh, black bill on it. Boy, you felt really proud to put all that stuff on. Said shell oil across here. Pumping gas? Yeah. Pumping gas. White shirts, and, uh, white pants, white hats. Everybody pumped gas. When, wow. when you'd pump gas, you'd run out there and you'd wash the windshield. Yes. You'd sweep out the inside of their car, check yeah. their oil, check all their tires, <laughs> just for really a couple, three gallons of gas. Well, anyway, he asked me, because I was hard work and everything, he had a truck that he was greasing out in the back but this truck was too big to put on the rack they didn't have a hoist rack they had to drive up on it he couldn't put the truck on there and he had to change the oil oh yeah i could do that so i went out there and what i did i changed the transmission <laughs> instead of the oil <laughs> You know, way beyond full. Oh, yeah. oh, you filled the crankcase and drained the uh, yeah, crankcase and the tranny. Filled it with new one. So I went back <laughs> and I went into the boss and I said, I've got something wrong. I said, that <laughs> oil is still dirty and it shows way over the full mark. So he glared at me and he come back out and went out and checked that. And he said, don't move that truck. So he righted my wrong, but before he did, he fired me. Ah! <laughs> Wait, did, you, did you feel the transmission? Fired me, and I had to go take off my wife. No, you had to go to dig up your wife. Take off all my wives and turn my cap in. Oh, you're kidding. I was so upset. <laughs> and you know, that ruined my whole year. Yeah. Because <laughs> this is my big job. Oh, boy. Well, oh, that's about the time your mom. Is it really? Uh, well, your grandma, my mom, 
went down to uh, California to pick up my wayward cousin and her family and bring her back and she was hit by a big fruit truck and rolled them over at Barstow, California and she was killed. This was your mom? My mom. She died instantly? Yeah. No. You roll over. She, all the kids were packed in this car of hers, it was a big car. And the kids were laying on top of all this bedding and stuff, and all of her gear was underneath in the back seat. And the mother and uh, my cousin Maxine, and mom was driving, and her husband. She went down to get her away from him, but she brought him back with her. One of those things. And. Uh, oh, you repeat that? She went down to get who away from who? She went down to get my cousin Maxine away from Bill. Got it. Uh, Just helping out. Just helping out. She was always helping out the, the kids. And uh, at Barstow, California, had this wreck. Or the truck ran into them, and she they rolled the car over. And the third time it rolled over, like, the door opened, and she slid out. And then it mm -hmm. just crushed her right through the pelvis. And she lived for about three days, just long enough for us to, Were you able to see her? drive this long, drive down to see her. And she just, my sister and I uh, were there. My brother I remember where Willis was, but he, or she died uh, that night. How old were you? Oh, let's see. 13, 14, I'm thinking, no, older. Older. Oh, you were, okay, because you had moved out, so 17, 18. I think it was 18. Okay. I have to figure the coolest out. thing you remember about mom, your mom, just if you could describe her. Oh, because she was, she was a beautiful lady. She was a dietitian, and I uh, loved her work. I loved to listen to her sing with with dad, because they could harmonize. Ah. They did a lot of that. Ah. Mom played the piano. And, uh, she did. Your mom played the piano. Yeah, and she she worked so damn hard to take care of us kids because most of our life we were living with dad or living with mom. They split up. Yes. And so we were, uh, but mom was, she worked hard. She worked hard. She worked for the St. Mark's Hospital in their kitchen in this, the West Salt Lake City. How old was she then? How old was she when she died? Because you were 17, she was probably, what, 50? Not even that. 47, I think. 47. Looking back in life, what one thing would you have done differently? <laughs> I, I, I really, the answer for that is, I don't think I could have done anything different. Good. I can appreciate everything that I've, I have done yeah. and uh, what I've accomplished, Very good. the family I've had. Very good. Nate, Nate Roundy, Nate Roundy, and he was my buddy. And every year I'd get down, he'd wait for me, and we just loved each other. And uh, he was a farm boy and did everything on the farm, could ride a horse like a cowboy and rope. And he went into service with me, and, but he died. He never come back. How many jobs did you have in Forks? Bees and... Oh, yeah, I was a beekeeper. I was a uh, uh, restaurant, run, um, operated the restaurant. Uh, I was uh, a faller. Uh, well, at one time, I was volunteer fire department, run the restaurant, and I... I Rejectionist. I can see what? Rejectionist? Rejectionist, yeah, for the local movie house. And uh, what else? Oh, logging? Working in the woods. Yeah. Working in the woods. I, when I came up here after I got out of the service, Are you writing down I just fell in love with the Northwest and the woods. Yeah. And I started and I went through everything from a choker setter to uh, uh, working on the landing. Uh, then I went into uh, bucking. That's the big saw. There was no power saws in that time, and we would use the old uh, Swedish fiddle and uh, or Danish. 
and buck the logs into in different lengths, 40 foot lengths usually. And then I, you some old timer it. just talked me into, because uh, I look so skookum, you know, like handsome and big muscle and everything, <laughs> wanted me to uh, go to falling really. So we made it set up as a, a, a couple, and then you go higher out as flowers, and you fell timber together because you. We had these tip, these uh, trees that were six foot through, and you had to board up on them. What they call oh my God. board up? You notch a hole in and put a, a springboard in. They call it, and you had to dance on that thing while we were chopping in the undercut in the tree like so, understand. and then you back it up with a saw and it would fall in the direction you wanted to fall most of the time. I worked for uh, the Shell Oil Company. Were you able to wear your whites again? F. Fisher, pa, pa Fisher, was, uh, owned the Shell Oil Company, and I uh, drove his oil trucks. Also, I was a club manager at the Legion Club. I attended bar then too, and then I run the club. And I, and all, another job I had, I owned a, I owned a skating rink, which was in the uh, in the American Legion Hall. And during that time too, I was uh, American Legion commander for a year also. So how would you describe yourself in closing? Howard Hanson, people person, for one. Oh, I don't. Uh, uh, and a family man. And a family man. I love my family. Right.